The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 11361 in the name of Jamie McGregor on tackling projected population decline in Argyll and Butte. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I'd also remind members or invite members who are leaving the chamber and indeed members of the public who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly, please. Mr McGregor, seven minutes. Thank you. I thank colleagues for supporting me on this frightening challenge facing Argyll and Butte. There's so much to say and only seven minutes, but it's necessary to grasp the thistle, to quote the title of Mr Russell's literary tomes, and do something now to change this alarming picture. I thank Dick Walsh and Argyll and Butte Council and other individuals for their briefings. Argyll's people matter and their children matter. That's what worries me. I've had six children in Argyll and Butte, but it's one thing to have them and quite another to keep them there. Argyll was and is a fantastic place to live, but the lack of modernization of its infrastructure is causing very significant problems now for those who want to make their living there. Last May's NRS projections are that the population of Argyll and Butte will fall by 13.5% over the next 25 years, against a 9% rise in the overall Scottish population. And even more concerning, people of working age are projected to fall by 22% by 2037. And that comes on top of a 3.5% decline between 2001 and 2011, with some islands such as Butte seeing a population decline of more than 10% in that time. Deputy Presiding Officer, when you look at the facades of the buildings in Rothsey or Danoon or Helensborough, you see the traces of an era of prosperity and enterprise. But these are fading fast. Despite the great efforts of very gifted people like John McCaslin, who has converted the Danoon Borough Hall back to its former glory. And I've seen the decline in population on Loch Orside, where I live, and a sharp fall in the number of people employed in the primary industries of forestry and farming. Forestry villages like Eredin and Delavich were mainly inhabited by forestry employees up until the 1980s. Now all these jobs in those villages are gone. So you have land that was nationalized, taken over by government, to provide local employment, no longer fulfilling that purpose. On the farming front, I personally remember the hard physical work which occupied many young people on the farms all over Argyll, which went hand in glove with the social life which made Argyll living so agreeable. That era has passed. Skills are being lost. Fisheries used to employ so many of the coastal communities. Again, this is in decline. Small villages were proud communities who competed in a friendly manner to have the best schools, shops, post offices and the like. That was the key to happy living. There are still sustainable communities, strong ones. Ardfern, for example, sets an example. But all of us here will recognise the pressures on declining population and an ageing one will place on public services and the local economy. We risk losing the critical mass needed to retain services like rural primary schools, the loss of which will discourage people moving to the area, a vicious cycle which is difficult to escape. Now, the challenge for us is to reverse this population decline and sow the seeds of something different. Increasing economic growth and attracting new business is essential. Government must provide the infrastructure, in particular transport links and digital communication technology. People like to be modern, not to be considered as hillbillies. Since Roman times, areas have been judged by their roads. The future of the A83 trunk road, that key artery into Argyle which links Cairn Do to Campbelltown, must be at the top of the transport list. Many words have been spoken, diversionary routes have been put in place, but ask any business in Argyle and Butte, and they will ask the Scottish Government for a permanent solution to deal with landslides. A canopy or covered emergency route option is the answer. Frankly, people are frightened to travel that road. Argyle needs a reliable and safe road system, please. That is fundamental. 
as are reliable and safe ferry services to Argyles Islands and for those who live and commute from Danoon to Glasgow. The Isle of Colonsey suffers from the unfair situation where freight charges are 25% more for a shorter journey than other islands. An unfair playing field. On broadband, too many Argyle communities suffer from slow, unaffordable or non-existent broadband. Improvements must be inclusive. On the islands of Isla and Jura, Beaumont and Port Ellen are to get fibre optics. But while the roads are all being dug up at Port Glasgow and Kiel, people there won't benefit. Neither will Brewer Claddick, Port Charlotte, Port Nehaven. They're all being bypassed. It's not good enough for islands which provide a huge boost to our treasury through whisky revenues. Holidaymakers now ask if letable properties have 4G and 3G, let alone broadband. No broadband can mean no visitors nowadays. Ministers must consider additional funding for HIE to support new business startups and attract new companies to Argyll and Butte. And planning relaxations are necessary while housing can be in short supply and business developments are hampered. What's the point of conserving particular features of rural community buildings if the end result is no one ends up living or working there? And how about local government-sponsored cooperative initiatives for businesses to overcome expensive overheads? The expensive overheads involved in individual efforts. The council or HIE could act as a coordinator for this. New initiatives between the council and the private sector for land use. What about tax incentives to grow business? Remember what Schedule D did for forestry planting. And finally, connectivity, emphasised by Dick Walsh and the Council. The writer, E.M. Forster, writer of five masterpieces, had the motto, only connect. That's vital, connection of transport and digital links and connection, both physical and mental, of people and ideas. Argyle has so many positives. Our wonderful scenery means tourism is a key part of the economy, from Oban's world-class shellfish restaurants to our stunning islands, to historic sites like Inverary Castle and Mount Stuart, and endless fascinating and historic ruins. This can be expanded with better promotion and focus on genealogical and archaeological tourism. We have world-class country sports and angling. The reintroduction of sporting rates will not help this sector, and that should be reconsidered. The food and drink sector, not least Isla's whisky industry, is strong. But look at the telephone and electricity grid on Isla and Jura if you want to see something that needs improving. Incentives for farmers to actually grow something other than just silage would be good. Good for biodiversity too, especially the bird love of Argyll and Butte, which is still an ornithologist's dream. The Scottish Association for Marine Science at Dunstaffnage has modernised and the new European Marine Science Park is a great addition. Our gal has great potential. But I am running out of time. So to conclude, Presiding Officer, I'm looking for commitment from the Scottish Government that it will treat tackling our gal and Butte's projected population, a depopulation, as a priority within their policies. Because our gal, or in Gaelic, Era Gale, the coast of the Gales, is a land of mystery and history a vital and integral area of Scotland where the blood and the beauty lies strong. There's a gypsy traveller saying that they would not swap one square foot of Argyle for the whole of Perthshire and the Kingdom of Fife. There will be those in this chamber who may disagree, but nonetheless, Argyle is the enduring heartland. Many thanks. And I now call on Mike Russell to be followed by David Stewart. Four minutes or thereby, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and I congratulate Jamie McGregor on uh, both securing this debate and on the poetry of his conclusion. And whilst I would not necessarily sign on to promote Argyll and Butte and, uh, it, it, by means of uh, criticising other areas, it is a most wonderful and remarkable place, and I'm very proud to be its member of the Scottish Parliament. And it's a measure of the seriousness of this, this problem that uh, the party politics have been put aside by most of us to debate and discuss this. So it is I think rather strange that no Liberal Democrat is in the chamber considering they have the MP for Argyll and Butte and indeed they are increasingly driving the policies of the Council mostly in the wrong direction. The population summit that the Council held earlier this year was something of a damp squib. The meeting was cancelled, rearranged, cancelled, rearranged 
And when it took place, it came up with very little, apart from a recommendation that there should be uh, something which is uh, called a sustainable task force. This hasn't even met yet. There have been two uh, council papers. But our Galibut Council is at the heart of this problem, and it should be much more active than it is in promoting change and growth. Uh, but there are roles, of course, for others, and Jamie McGregor is right to talk about that. I was at a, member, uh, I was at a meeting last week of the A83 task force in, held in Arica, where there was a commitment by the Scottish Government to the principle of continuous access. In other words, there does need to be a permanent solution to the problem that exists on the A83, and the Scottish Government knows it and is working on it. And the Scottish Government has also with, uh, invested very heavily in the uh, infrastructure of our Gail and Butte. Not only has there been substantial expenditure on the 83, but the broadband project presently going forward in the Highlands and Islands is the largest in Europe. There were 25 submarine cables laid uh, last summer. Uh, uh, the majority of those ended in or started in or both our Gail and Butte. So there is a massive programme of investment, but it needs to be matched by the actions of the local authority and by some private enterprise too. The mobile phone companies are very remiss in their lack of investment in Argyll and Butte. It has the worst mobile phone service in Scotland, and indeed there are regular outages which the companies seem incapable of dealing with. <coughs> Apologies, providing officer. Uh, Oban was uh, without a Vodafone signal for nine days at the start of this year. Uh, Vodafone has also failed to provide a signal in Loch Gilpaird, in Isla, uh, and in other places on a regular basis and EE and O2 are not much better. But I want today, presiding officer, to put forward three ideas, which I did put to the council leader, Dick Walsh, for his population summit. I uh, wrote to him about them and had a five-page rebuttal. So I want to start again and to see if they will listen to some of the things that need to be done. And at the very start is to listen to what the community is saying. On Saturday, I attended a march and rally in support of the Castle Towered buyout. The community in Castle Towered has received £750,000 in the Scottish Land Fund. It is very keen to purchase the castle and to make sure that 100 jobs are created. And for some reason, best known to themselves, the council are resistant to that change. And I would appeal to them, even at this late stage, on a day when they have a motion in front of them asking to continue the issue for another month, that they do that and enter into serious negotiation. But there are three constructive things that could be done. First, there needs to be a, a focus on the problem with an entrepreneurial um, and adventurous approach. That's got to be a priority. There needs to be urgency and intelligence in devising solutions. Secondly, the council must work with others to do that. It needs a small, flexible group of people. It's looking at lots of different ideas. There's no silver bullet in this. But it should put together that group, not some massive process-driven task force that will simply take minutes. What it needs is a small group of people working together, uh, elected representatives and others, who can bring forward ideas. For example, one idea, presiding officer, and I'm conscious of the time that is already on the table, is to talk to those who come and take holiday cottages, because some of those may wish to stay. And very simple information providing to them will help. And thirdly, that policy has to be driven at the heart of everything the Council does. It's no use closing schools or making planning much more difficult. Uh, it, what you need to do is to have every policy focused on population growth. And finally, we need innovation and ideas. In the 19th century, in fact, in 1868, there was the first proposal for a railway that would connect Ireland to Scotland. It was to go from Torhead to the Mull of Kintyre. Now, that's a big project. I'm not asking the minister to commit to it today. <laughs> But I'm glad to see David McKenzie here in the gallery. He has been working very hard with myself and others on ideas for a fixed link to Cowell, something that would be affordable and invest, uh, we could invest in, which would generate new business and new population within part of our guile, which would grow outwards. We need big thinking. HIE proposed last year a new road from Dunoon to Loch Gilped. Let's look at capital investment. Let's look at work. But above all, the council has to get active because presently it's passive and process-driven, and that's not good enough. Many thanks. I now call on David Stewart to be followed by Mike McKenzie. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and could I firstly congratulate Jimmy McGregor on securing this afternoon's uh, debate. The member spoke passionately about uh, population decline in Island Butte, and I must say his speech was very thoughtful and very colourful. Um, Skills Development Scotland, in its recent document, the Skills Investment Plan for the Highlands and Islands, argues that the biggest challenge for the region 
uh, that it was the retention and attraction of working age people. And where there has been strong population growth, this of course has been driven by in-migration, typically of older people. And of course the beauty of uh, Agailan Butte has made it a very desirable area to retire in, albeit uh, also has attracted many Highlanders from all over the world to return to their place of birth. But Agailan Butte has an older age profile and has a deficit of skilled people of working age, particularly in the 15 to 39 age group. So what can we do to address the population decline? And I would certainly endorse the uh, comments made by the two previous speakers in terms of the way forward. I believe that education is a very powerful tool in the armory. And of course, the University of Hans Islands has received support from successive Scottish governments and from all parties in the chamber. And perhaps I could put the record uh, of the support that Mike Russell uh, gave UHI when he was the cabinet secretary for education, which is uh, very greatly uh, supported. There are now around 9,300 students taking HE qualifications across the region including in the Gowan Butte. But I believe, President Officer, as the university matures, develops and broadens its range of academic courses, this will decelerate out migration and encourage more people, and indeed students of all ages, to study, train and work within a Gowan Butte. And of course we've got to develop the niche. Um, for example, the great work being done by Sam's in Marine is a good, a good example of how you develop the needs to reflect the needs of the local area. So the key in my belief is we need to align academic experience, learning and training provision with the current and future needs of employers. For example, the provision of modern apprenticeships in energy, engineering, uh, food and drink. And we have to be realistic that regions in Scotland are effectively in competition in with each other as far as industry and inbred migration is concerned. So if the aim is to target those of working age, we need to the question of how competitive is Highlands and Islands as a region and Agile and Butte specifically around ensuring, and some members have already touched on this, ensuring adequate affordable housing, uh, ensuring integration of transport, looking at broadband speed, and I think the point that Mike Russell made um, about the quality of mobile phone infrastructure. And of course, uh, employers will play a very key role. I believe it's really important they're not just passive observers, but they're key partners with Skills Development Scotland and others, and make sure that they prepare a skills plan based on not just on current, but in future needs. And I also believe that structural funds will play a very important uh, part in providing both infrastructure and helping with social skills and training. And finally, of course, we all know this point, but it's worth stating this, that depopulation and economic activity are inversely related. For example, if you take the last figures I could find in 2012, in Gowland Butte had an, an employment rate was below the hands and Islands average. Again, in the same year, the, uh, en the unemployment rate was above the average and the economic activity rate was also above the hands and Islands average. So that's the task. Again, looking at population change, if you just take the figures from 2011 and the change from 2001, Gowland Butte lost 3.4%. That's the largest area population decline uh, in the region also had the lowest employment rate of young people and the largest economic inactivity rate of young people, in fact, higher than the Scottish average. So that may be the, the facts in the past, but I believe we've got to be positive for the future. So in conclusion, uh, Poseidon, also, I believe that, of course, we've got beautiful landscape and breathtaking scenery for Gowan Butte. That does not by itself put food on the table and clothes on the backs of children. The key goals must be to address the population decline is to stimulate and grow the economy target the retention and attraction of young people. And I believe that UHI is an impressive and dynamic institution and in conjunction with Schools Development Scotland and employers will give young people and incoming students the tools uh, to serve the local community. I believe the area is open for business and I'm convinced that with UHI and as, as UHI grows and develops and we remedy the infrastructure headaches, the population decline and economic inactivity will be reversed. Thanks again to Jamie Gregor for his initiative taking forward this debate. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Mike McKenzie, after which we move the closing speech from the Minister. President Officer, I must congratulate Jamie McGregor for securing this debate. And I agree with a lot of, or, but maybe not absolutely everything that he says, um, because population loss is the most significant and profound issue facing Argyll and Butte. And it's one of the few parts of Scotland now facing population decline and it's the only part of the Highlands and Islands facing population decline. And we know this population loss has been experienced mainly by the more rural and the peripheral communities. And many of these communities, after 
years of progressive decline are reaching a tipping point where they will plunge into complete unsustainability. Good evidence for this became apparent in 2010, when the Council then proposed closing 26 primary schools, one third of their school estate. And this was our reaction to falling school roles. But the effect of closing these schools would have been to hammer the final nails into the coffins of communities that were beginning to die. And thankfully, parents and politicians fought a determined and vigorous campaign and succeeded in halting these proposals. And I must pay a tribute to my colleague Michael Russell in providing leadership and energy uh, in that campaign, which was ultimately successful. And our Gaelic Butte Council should have realised at the outset that the school's issue was a symptom of a deeper malaise. But it was not really until the publication of the 2011 census that they began to become aware of population loss. And this was hammered home as their budget settlement began to decline, because, um, uh, along with the following population. Because, as we know, the GAE formula is a population-based formula. And the response of Argyll Butte Council so far has been to organise the population summit that Michael Russell touched on, which was held finally a few weeks ago. And this in itself was an admission that they don't know how to remedy the problem. But even now, I'm unconvinced that they're willing to acknowledge that they, in part, are at least responsible for this problem. And today, I'm unaware of any credible policy response to tackle the problem. And it's a problem that I've described for many years of witnessing this sad decline as the dead hand of our Gallen Butte Council. The Council, of course, are quick to deny this and defend their position. They point to a number of other challenges beyond their control. The credit crunch, the ensuing recession, poor connectivity. But they fail to recognise that these challenges affect all other parts of the Highlands and Islands, and in some cases more profoundly than Argyll and Butte. So removing all these other reasons leads to the only possible conclusion that it's the policies and the practice of the local authority that are responsible for this sad demise of Argyll and Butte. But the patient continues to deny that it has any disease and it refuses to take any medicine. And the culture in the upper echelons of Argyll and Butte Council is of an organisation that exercise power by saying no, saying no to the aspirations of individuals, saying no to the aspirations of businesses and social enterprises, and saying no to the aspirations of communities. And if people are unable to fulfil their reasonable aspirations, they go elsewhere. Presiding officer, it's as simple as that. Many thanks. I will now move to the Minister for the closing speech on behalf of the Government. Uh, Mr Biagi, you have seven minutes or thereby, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I uh, just want to recognise uh, Jamie McGregor for bringing this uh, motion here. It does stem from the work of a, a community planning partnership, the, the summit that has been described. And I would just like to take a moment to, to recognise a community planning partnership with my community empowerment hat on as something that is uniquely placed to provide a, a forum for all the public bodies that have an input on this to work together. The Deputy First Minister, uh, Finance Secretary at the time, was very pleased to contribute to that summit, speaking, taking questions on how the government can support the work. And population decline doesn't come under any one authority or agency's remit. It can only be dealt with by partnership. And at a time when improvements to the work of CPPs have been coming forward from Audit Scotland and when we are updating their role and function in the Community Empowerment Bill, this shows an example of the sort of cross-cutting issue they are the right forum uh, in which to tackle. And Looking at the demographics, you can clearly see the population challenges that are being faced. 
older, dispersed, gradually declining uh, population. The picture is more mixed than might at first be obvious, and that's not to take away from the, the direction and the challenge that there is, but to see in it the seeds of how we can perhaps, uh, as a country and as local agencies, attract people. In the 10 years to 2013, more people actually moved in to Argyll and Butte than moved out. The population decline was brought about by deaths outnumbering births. And in the last two years, Argyll and Butte had a net loss of, of people through out-migration in the 16 to 29 age group, uh, that group that uh, David Stewart pointed out, but had a, a net gain in all the other working age age groups running from 30 to 65, making any place a uh, sustainable, a vibrant community depends on a whole set of factors coming together. And that's as valid for a, a village as a county, indeed as a, a country. So I would say that recognising the, the thrust of where everyone is coming from, there, the issue of opportunities for work, which from government means putting in place the right economic support, the right infrastructure, opportunities for a, a fulfilling life more broadly, which from government means the, the schools, the, the health facilities, the the places where communities can come together, and a physical environment that's conducive to, to all of that. And I have to say, in that regard, Argyll and Butte with the, the Arakara Alps, uh, Iona, Cowell, you know, it doesn't need uh, much help from the government to be an inspiring and beautiful, frankly, place to, to choose to live. On the other two, though, there is a, a lot we can uh, do and are doing. And the programme for government sets out a range of measures which are very relevant to Argyll and Butte and will help tackle inequality and ensure the region flourishes. Transport links have been talked about extensively. 14.2 million is going to improve the A82 at Pulpit Rock and Crean Larich. We've already improved the A83, nine million pounds at the rest and be thankful. Further works at Kingla uh, Glen, Kinglass and elsewhere. And the task force, which has already been mentioned, is addressing the problem of continuous access, which all would recognise and, and all would want to see brought in. We're also, importantly, rolling out road equivalent tariff to Butte to further boost connectivity. But connectivity these days isn't just about moving vehicles, it is also about internet connections, which have been raised. Yes, of course. Um, Mike Russell. I, it is vitally important in Argyll and Butte to mention every part that's affected. I'm sure he will want to recognise that RET, in its final rollout, roll will also go to the island of Mull, which also needs it very badly. Yes, yes, indeed. We have a, a full rollout uh, in effect from October. And the nature of Argyll and Butte is that sometimes I, I find when I have the list, I have so many names that I would spend uh, the, the whole course of the, the, my time going through the entire list. It is not to leave anywhere out, but simply to say that Argyll and Butte is such a, a diverse set of communities that uh, all will, will benefit. And on that, I have, for example, a list of uh, 15, no, no, 17 places that are benefiting from community broadband, which I will not uh, occupy my time with reading out, but simply say that that support is there for those that are not being reached by the mainstream project, which has been referred to already as being the largest such project in Europe. Let me be uh, very clear, 800 kilometres of new fibre on land, 400 kilometres of subsea cables. This is vast. And importantly, the programme of extending broadband infrastructure will cover 85% of premises, whereas wholly commercial development without government intervention would only have reached 28%. That margin is the margin that is being uh, brought about because of our government intervention. Yes. Ian McGregor. Uh, I thank the Minister for taking intervention on that. And whilst I agree that um, this big project is very welcome, would you agree with me that the areas that are left out are left at a very considerable disadvantage, especially in the tourism market, and, and, and that those areas that are connected have an enormous advantage? Uh, and and the, it's very difficult for, for some businesses. Minister. I'll certainly agree that it is very important for any business to be able to connect and we do have, as, a, as I referred to before, Community Broadband Scotland, which is targeting the work for community broadband solutions that will affect communities, localities that will bring that benefit to those that will not uh, receive the benefit from the mainstream rollout. That is our way of ensuring that broadband in proper quality and the kind that is demanded by by these communities can reach uh, every possible corner of Scotland, of Argyll and Butte. 
And uh, that's not the only thing vital for the economy. You know, there's regeneration going on, the Regeneration Capital Grant Fund to improve Dunoon Pier, tax increment financing Oban North Pier. The People and Communities Fund is supporting uh, people across the region, Empowering Communities Fund, which will be uh, shortly uh, being detailed by the government, will uh, undoubtedly offer more opportunities. The Small Business Bonus Scheme in Argyll and Butte is helping a tremendous proportion. More than half of all business properties are now paying zero or reduced business rates, one of the higher in the country. And the Community Empowerment Bill that uh, I am uh, trying to put through Parliament will allow the local council to adopt local business rate schemes as well to further build on that, something that will help local authorities tackle areas that need additional business rate support. Highlands and Islands Enterprise has, uh, in the first three quarters of 2014-15, created retained 97 FTE jobs, a £5 million Pound increase in business turnover. We have the European Marine Science Park. We have the Scottish Power Renewables investments in, uh, in the Sound of Islay. There, Isla, there are all kinds of business uh, projects going in, but perhaps what we do need is that overarching strategy, everybody continuing to come together and recognising those challenges, the need for effective partnership. Our Gail and Butte Council is setting up an economic forum due to meet next month. There's a tourism summit on 17th of March and I myself will be uh, going to visit our Gail and Butte very soon. There I will be discussing how we can further boost the economy, how we can keep working together, how we can ensure the whole region flourishes and I will be sure to raise there all the important issues that have been aired in today's debate. Many thanks, Minister. Many thanks to you all. I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30 this afternoon.